Hi, I'm Chef Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art. And welcome to part two of Back to Basics. In the first part, I showed you how to make a cake from scratch and also how to make a cake from a cake mix. In today's lessons, I'm gonna be going over icings, specifically a Swiss buttercream and an American buttercream, or the, the typical buttercream that you will find from bakeries and cake decorators in the United States. I just wanna mention Italian buttercream. I'm going to devote an entire YouTube video later on to just Italian buttercream because it's a little more complicated and it's a longer lesson and there's a lot of things that can go wrong in making the icing and I'd like to spend the proper amount of time to teach you how to make a good Italian buttercream. The Swiss buttercream I'm making today is a modified recipe that allows you to use the icing when you're dealing with warmer temperatures outside. So it is a, it's a more stable icing and it's also better for decorating. It's also a very delicious icing. So just basically an Italian buttercream is a meringue that is made with egg whites and sugar and then you heat sugar and water to a soft candy stage, 240 degrees, and then you pour that into the egg whites so you have a cooked meringue, then you add butter to it. A Swiss meringue, you start with fresh egg whites and sugar and you heat them to 140 or 160 degrees and then you whip it and then you fold in or whip in the butter. We're using a modified recipe today that I think you're going to enjoy, you're going to find a lot easier and you can use both fresh egg whites or powdered egg whites. So let's get started. Okay, let's get going with the Swiss buttercream. To begin with, we'll go over the ingredients. We're going to start with one cup of fresh egg whites. Now I'm going to be using the American standard uh, for measurements, but we will post the metric uh, measurements as well on the uh, bottom of the YouTube and on our website. So one cup of fresh egg whites and we're going to add two cups of granulated sugar. If you can get super fine sugar, that works even better, but it doesn't have to be super fine sugar. We're going to put both of those in a bowl the same bowl that you're going to mix this with and I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. Now there is a safety factor with egg whites. Uh, everyone knows that they, they can um, uh, breed bacteria that can make you sick so people are very conscious about using egg whites in icings now. This becomes a safe icing when you heat this up to 140 to 160 degrees. 160 degrees is better. At that point you're pasteurizing the egg whites. While I mention that, I should tell you that you can't use the egg whites that you purchase in the grocery store in a quart container that are pre-pasteurized. They will not whip up. They're great for cooking, but not for making icing. So I'm just going to stir this together. And then I have a hot water bath. I have about an inch of water in here and I've got it on a medium high heat. I'm going to place the bowl right on that pan and I'm just going to gently stir this. This could take 5, 10 or 15 minutes depending on how hot that water is. You don't want the water boiling because steam is much hotter than boiling water and if you don't want scrambled eggs make sure you don't boil your water. So just keep it hot Make sure there's a little bit of steam coming off the top, but not a hard boil. I have ready an instant reading thermometer, and I'm going to hit, heat this mixture until it reaches about 160 degrees. Go up to at least 140. While I'm doing this, I want to talk about a substitution that I've used for years uh, in bakeries that I've worked at, and I still use it at home all the time. Instead of fresh egg whites, for this recipe, I would use four tablespoons of powdered egg whites and I would mix that with three quarters of a cup of warm water. Blend the two together in a bowl and let them sit for about five minutes for the egg whites to absorb the water. Then add your sugar and your vanilla and go through the same process. Put it on a, a water bath and just gently mix this until it reaches about 120 degrees. You don't have to worry about pasteurizing that mixture. What you're trying to do there is melt the sugar. The whole idea of heating this up is to make the egg whites safe and to melt the sugar. If you don't melt the sugar, you're gonna have a grainy icing at the end. So this is the, a very important part of the mix. So I'm just gonna keep mixing this 
This will take about another five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and we'll be back as soon as this is ready to show you how to continue making the Swiss buttercream. Okay, we're back. The mixture is up to 160 degrees, and you can see the consistency. It's, it's very liquid at this point. So I'm gonna turn my, my burner off, and we're gonna put this on the mixer with a whip, and we're gonna whip this until it reaches stiff peaks and it cools down. It's really important that you whip this long enough so that it does cool down. You don't want to ever add butter to a hot meringue mixture. So we'll get this going. This will probably take about five minutes to whip. And we're going to put this right up at high speed. Okay, okay we're back. My meringue is almost ready and I just wanted to show you one quick tip. When I first put this bowl on here, the bowl was really quite warm. And I don't want to wait all day for this to cool down to put my butter in. So I've taken a flexible ice pack. You can buy these in medical stores or you can buy them for shipping containers and um, it works perfect. Just put that on the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to turn the mixer on for two reasons. So you can see the consistency of the meringue from, from the camera and to see how this has cooled down. So that's a nice thick meringue at this point. I'm going to take this off so you can see how heavy that is. And that's exactly what that should look like. And it's actually cooled down enough now that I can put the butter in and I didn't have to wait a long time because I used the ice pack. You don't have to use it, but it just makes your job a little easier. Okay, now we're ready to start putting the butter and the shortening in. And I just want to talk briefly about this. We're using two cups of butter, which is about 454 grams, and one and a half cups of Crisco, or some sort of a white shortening. Um, that's about 270 grams. Crisco works fine. You can buy the non-hydrogenated one now, which is even healthier to use. The best shortenings to use are Sweet Tex or Alpine or some brand of high ratio cake and icing shortening. They will give you the best stability and the best workability for an icing, especially for a commercial application, like if you're making wedding cakes or birthday cakes um, that, that may be in a hot environment, in a hot kitchen, or at a party where the room is warm. That's gonna give you the best icing. But most people can get a white shortening like Crisco in their local supermarket. So that's what I'm using today. The reason I don't use all butter is because it will not stabilize as well. The icing will break down more easily and it doesn't hold up in the heat as well. Now you can certainly substitute this for butter. That's your own choice. But the icing I'm showing you today is going to be the best Swiss buttercream I've ever used for decorating and has a great flavor and great stability. So I'm going to turn the mixer back on and I'm going to start adding the butter in small amounts. Now, the butter is soft. You can see that I can cut right through it, but it's still cool. You don't want the butter sort of oozing and running on the plate. Then it's way too soft and you're liable to break down the icing. So let's start by putting this butter in a little piece at a time. Okay, I've added half the butter, and you can see that I had the mixer probably three quarters of its full speed, and I'm putting in about a tablespoon at a time. The reason I'm stopping now is I want to let you know that whether you're making an Italian or a Swiss buttercream, as you continue adding more of the fat content, this will start breaking down and look curdled. That's when most people panic and say, oh my goodness, I've ruined my icing. You haven't. That's one of the natural stages the icing is gonna go through. It will break down, and as you continue adding the fat, it'll start coming together again into a nice creamy icing.
Because the butter is a little bit more solid than the shortening, I'm going to stop now before I add the shortening and I'm going to scrape the bowl and make sure if there's any small chunks of butter that we get those off the sides and the bottom. And this still hasn't broken. It doesn't always break, so if it doesn't break, don't worry about it. But then again, if it does break, don't worry about it. So I'm going to start adding the shortening now. Okay, we've added all the shortening. I'm going to scrape it down one more time and I can see it's actually starting to break. So I want to take this off so you can see this consistency. It's very, very soft and liquidy and it almost looks like it's breaking. And that's to be expected. So we're going to put this back on the mixer and I'm going to whip this on high for about two minutes, maybe two or three minutes. And this will all come together. And then we're going to add our confectioner sugar at the very end. Okay, I've only mixed this for about 30 seconds, but I wanted to show you what that, what that short amount of time did. Look at my icing now. Look how quickly that changed. So what you thought was a curdled icing when it was very soupy has now become a beautiful buttercream. But we're going to mix this a little bit more just to get it smoother. And then we'll add the sugar. So give us about a minute on this. Okay, we finished mixing it and now I'm going to add the confectioner sugar. Now this is the part that you will rarely, rarely find a recipe for Swiss buttercream that has confectioner sugar in it. But then there again, this will stabilize your icing, make a much better icing to use on cakes that are going to be in a warm environment. It also makes a much better icing for decorating. So I'm going to add all of this at once. And of course, if I turn this mixer on high now, I'm going to be wearing the uh, sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on low. Just take a regular kitchen towel and wrap it around. And then just turn that on. Let that run for about 30 or 40 seconds. And that will mix the sugar in. I haven't dropped one of these in the mixer yet, so it's pretty safe. All right, that's in already. It just really prevents a mess. I'm going to scrape this down one last time. And then I'm going to give this about another two minutes um, on a medium speed. Okay, the icing is done. If you want to make this a really nice chocolate icing, melt about four ounces of unsweetened baking chocolate uh, over a, a hot water bath or even in the microwave on a low temperature. And then after it's completely melted, stir it until it's cool. And then pour it in here and whip it up. And it makes just a really luscious chocolate icing. I wanted to show you the final consistency of this icing. It's very, very light and smooth and creamy. It's, it's delicious. It has a lot of butter in it. It has a really nice flavor and yet it's a very, very workable icing. Now, after you're done using this, if you have any icing left, you can put it in containers in the refrigerator sealed for about two weeks or you can freeze the icing. I recommend that you freeze it in small containers and that way when you take it out of the freezer, it doesn't take a long time to thaw. So use small containers, put it in the freezer, and then when you want to make a cake or cupcakes or something, take out one or two packages 
and just leave them in the refrigerator overnight or leave them on the counter until they come to almost room temperature and then re-whip it and it's ready to go. So this is the modified Swiss buttercream. The next buttercream I'm gonna make is a traditional American buttercream. And for many people who don't live in the United States, this seems like a rather foreign buttercream. Typically, it's either all butter or in many cases, it's all shortening or a combination thereof uh, in the United States. The reason I'm showing you these buttercreams today is because I want to show you buttercreams that are easy to decorate with. And not all buttercreams are. So these two recipes I'm giving you today will give you a, a nice uh, set of recipes that you, that you can use for cake decorating in all sorts of applications. So we'll be right back and we'll do the American buttercream. Okay, we're back to do the American buttercream. And the ingredients aren't that different than a lot of other buttercreams, but the mixing method that I'm gonna show you today probably is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. Now, I use a mixture of water and coffee creamer, powdered coffee creamer. This is totally optional. You don't have to use the powdered coffee creamer. What I find that it does do is it gives you a creamier frosting. It decorates beautifully. It smooths beautifully on your cake when you're trying to get that real nice glossy uh, satin finish on a buttercream cake. And it also helps the buttercream to crust on the outside. Now when I say crust, I don't mean that it's gonna dry out and be crack, you know, crack all over. It just dries enough so that if you wanted to impress a design using design impression uh, mats, or if you wanted to stencil on the cake, or if you wanted to use uh, what they call the paper towel method of smoothing the cake, you can do that, where you take a paper towel or a piece of computer paper and you put it on the dried buttercream and you just smooth it with a smoother uh, on the outside of the paper and you get a beautiful, beautiful uh, finish on your cake. So this is a crusting buttercream. Um, but again, it's a very light crust. It's nothing that you're going to have to cut through uh, and make the cake crack. That's not what a crusting buttercream is. So we're going to start with two pounds of powdered sugar. And if you're not sure about the source of the sugar, you can, um, you can sift it, which is really a good idea. I find that the Domino's powdered sugar rarely needs to be sifted. Just a quick note on sugars. The Domino sugar that I just used is cane sugar. And cane powdered sugar makes the best icing. A lot of the times when you go to grocery stores and you see bulk packages of powdered sugar, it's actually beet sugar. And although it looks identical, it does react differently in the icing and it doesn't work the same. So if you can find cane sugar, you're gonna find that your icing is better. So we're gonna start with uh, two cups, or excuse me, two pounds, which is about 910 grams of powdered sugar. And we're gonna start with a half a cup of butter. That's about 113 grams or one stick. And that's soft, but it's still cool. And I have one and a half cups of solid uh, white shortening. It's about 270 grams. Now again, I'm using the non-hydrogenated non-hydro uh, Crisco, but if you have Sweet Tex or some sort of a commercial um, uh, cake and icing shortening that's high ratio, that's even better. I'm gonna put only half of this in. Now, I've taken my water which is about, uh, let's see, I have to just check my recipe real quick. Two tablespoons of the powdered coffee creamer and one third cup of water. I've boiled the water, I've added the powdered uh, coffee creamer, I've dissolved it completely, and then I've cooled this down. And I'm gonna mix this together and slowly add this mixture. Um, and we're gonna beat that on low until it's nice and creamy and we try to get all the lumps out before we add the remaining shortening. So I'm also gonna be adding about two tablespoons of the Allen's Bridal Blend. This is sort of a, uh, a blend of, of citrus and a little bit of cherry and vanilla and butter flavoring. It's a beautiful blend. It gives a really nice um, um, essence and, and fragrance and taste uh, to the buttercream without being overpowering. I'm also gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of popcorn salt. Now, if you, this is totally optional. The salt just adds a little flavor to your icing. If you don't have popcorn salt, just omit the salt because regular salt 
is is uh, too coarse and it won't dissolve in the icing and you'll feel the little the grains of the salt the popcorn salt is super fine and it just dissolves into the icing so we're going to add that and then i'm going to put a paddle on here not a whip we're going to use the paddle and to start this off just like i did with the swiss buttercream i'm going to put this towel around the mixer and just turn that on low and let that combine If you look too soon, you're going to get a face full of powdered sugar. Okay, it's not completely combined yet, so I'm going to start adding my, my uh, coffee mate or the, uh, the coffee creamer and the water mixture. Now I'm just going to let this blend on a low to medium speed for a minute or two until all the ingredients are combined. By starting, by starting with a heavier mixture, um, you're smoothing the icing and you're getting all the lumps. So if there were any lumps in the sugar, you're going to be working them out at this time. I'm not ready to add the remaining shortening yet, but I wanted to show you the consistency. You can see it looks kind of heavy and very thick. I'm going to put this back on and I'm going to put this up to about a medium high speed and I'm going to let this go for about two minutes. Okay, we've given this about two minutes on, on medium high speed. I'm going to add the remaining shortening. So now all the ingredients are in here. Now. If you'll notice, I held back half of the shortening, not the butter. If the butter is on the cool side when you put it in the icing, that's part of the reason you're going to get some lumps. And that's why we put the icing, the butter in the icing first when the mixture is thicker and it will break up those lumps. The shortening easily dissolves into the sugar, so that's not the problem. So make sure you put the butter in first. Don't hold back part of the butter. So we're going to go about two more minutes now on a medium speed. Don't overmix this. Uh, for this first, this first part of the icing, you want it well combined and, and fluffy, but you don't want to overbeat it. Okay, the icing is done. This is the first part of the icing. Now, I'm going to stop here for a few reasons, which I'm, I'm going to show you. I want you to see the consistency of the icing. It's, it's thick. This is perfect for decorating and for making roses. You could, eat, If you're only going to be making roses with this batch of icing, you could even hold back some of the water in the beginning. Maybe only put half of that water uh, coffee creamer mixture and then uh, you can add more later. So I would put some of this aside for decorating. And then if I wanted to ice my cake, I would put this back on the mixer with the paddle on low speed, just a low speed for two or three or four more minutes even until it's very creamy and soft and fluffy. And then you have a beautiful icing to ice a cake. So there's different consistencies that you can make with the same icing just by how, how much you mix the icing. If you find that you're decorating and your icing is really grainy and starts seeming a little runny, You've overmixed your icing. And unfortunately, with buttercream, there's nothing you can do to correct that. People try to add more confectioner sugar to make it thick again. It just doesn't come back. So be careful not to overmix your icing. Um, so, once again, that's the consistency I'm looking for uh, for decorating and uh, for roses or piping. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I wanted to tell you a couple quick substitutions. Yes, you can make this with all butter. Will it be as good? It'll be a delicious icing, but it won't work as well for icing and decorating. It's going to be a much, much softer icing. Flavor will be fabulous. So if you're just looking for a nice buttercream to ice a cake, that would be perfect. 
You can change the proportions. If you don't want to use one and a half cups of the Crisco, you can use one cup and then add a cup and a half of butter. So feel free to play around with the proportions. You can omit the salt if you want to. You can omit the coffee creamer if you want to. And lastly, use whatever flavoring you want. There are tons of recipes on the market and on the internet for buttercream. It's not always the recipe, it's how it's mixed that will give you the best final results. So be adventurous and look for new recipes and try them all. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the basics. Our next one will be on beginning uh, piping. So we're gonna go through a whole series of piping with buttercream. Thank you for watching and as always you can find all the supplies at globalsugarart.com. Thank you.